Hi everyone, my name is Scott Havner. I'm former chief editor and current assistant editor of Threshold. And I'm super lucky to be here today with uh, Austin Meyer, Hi. founder of x -Plane. Um So Austin, I think most of us know who you are and you, know, you founded x -Plane however many years ago. I want to say like 1995. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously x -Plane has a pretty big team now. You know, what is your role there now? You know, how has that changed right. over the years? So it's interesting. I wrote all of x -Plane through, sorry, I wrote all of x -Plane through, I want to say like maybe version 6 or something like that. And then yeah. Sergio Santagata started coming in and helping out with the scenery around version 7, as I recall. Um, so I did everything through, yeah, about version 6. Yeah. And these days, by far, our biggest focus is on super high power graphics, Vulcan and metal to make it fast, high quality aircraft and art assets, networking. And so the focus on the company at this moment is speeding up networking, frame rate, making sure the thing is absolutely solid and has a minimum number of bugs. So what do I, what's my position then? My position is surprisingly small because I've got artists doing the airplanes, Daniela doing the sound, Ben doing the graphics, yeah. uh, you're doing the networking. I continue to be the flight model guy. But yeah. the thing is the flight model is kind of getting asymptotically close to its basically terminal value, as good as I want it to be. Yeah. Um, I probably made about uh, two dozen flight model improvements in the last, say, oh, I don't know, four months or so, in the last, say, quarter, and, um, or the last three months. So I continue to do flight model refinement. And uh, specifically, I'm working on an electric vertical takeoff on any airplane called Able, with a company called Beta. And uh, so I was continuously improving and refining the flight model of x -Plane to simulate this eVTOL aircraft as accurately as we possibly could. So my role at this point is primarily just flight model refinement as I have all the people that report to me making the changes that are more visible, specifically graphics and sound and networking. Gotcha. And frame rate. Gotcha. So um, you know, how's x -Plane done at the Expo this year? I see a lot of the, the hardware showcases. Mm -hmm. They run x -Plane on their oh, simulators. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, you just want to talk a little bit about it. Well, you. yeah, I'd love to see the adoption of the sim. Certainly, no question. People are absolutely switching over to x -Plane, as I knew they would uh, a long time ago. And uh, it's great to see it happening. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think people are switching over to x -Plane, and uh, I think that's going to continue as we continue to do what we've been doing. Just yeah. improve the, the rendering quality, the graphics, the frame rate, the networking, make sure it's absolutely solid. Uh, we're always going to provide the most open possible ecosystem. Uh, plane maker, airfoil maker, they're not going away. Um, plugins aren't going away. All the things that let people run with their own creativity, yeah. full speed ahead, nothing holding them back. That's what I base the business on, and that's not changing. So the future is, is basically, I think you can pretty much predict the future from the past. When you look at what x plane over the last 10 years, apply it to the next 10, and I don't think you're going to get surprised. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so... You know, what are your, what are, what are some of your main goals for, you know, kind of the near and the far future? Right. So for the near future, I want to finish getting uh, Vulcan and Metal loaded yeah, into sure. uh, X-Plane so that we run as fast as we can. And we're seeing something like a 20% frame rate improvement, especially in the AMD hardware. The AMD yeah. hardware is more yeah, frame rate yeah. improvement than the NVIDIA hardware. Um, so uh, the near-term goal is to get that uh, Vulcan and Metal port done so we're running as fast as we possibly can with the fewest possible hiccups. Yeah. Another near-term goal, networking. I hired a uh, guy uh, named Jorg um, whose only job is to make networking solid, bulletproof, and global, which yeah. means if you're in Chicago and someone else is in Taiwan, you guys can fly multiplayer together. Yeah, yeah. So another fairly near-term goal is uh, multiplayer. So my near-term goals, I think, are, are just really, really good network and high frame rate and graphics yeah. with the assumption that all the new airplanes and art and all that stuff that's been an airport scenery gateway and all that stuff that's been happening of course continues to happen as well yeah, um, Julian is running the uh, gateway we've come through over 10,000 3D airports yeah. and uh, so all the usual you'd expect with new airplanes airports etc continues but what I'm focused on assuming that that's happening is uh, the, the frame rate and the networking. So the sim is, is fast and accessible. Can I ask you one thing really quick? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of looking at you know, Vulcan and Metal, has right. the performance increased? That you've seen what you expected it to be? I didn't know what to expect. Gotcha. Ben is really more of an expert in that area, gotcha. but I can tell you that when I see a 20% improvement, I'm That's, pretty happy to see yeah. it. Pretty happy to see it. Yeah. When I see the little hiccups or the delays start gotcha. to disappear, that's when I start to realize you've actually got a product we want to have. That's no longer happy. That's like, this is what we need to do, period. So um, I'd say I, 
it, it's, I didn't have an expectation except to get rid of the pauses and improve the frame rate. And that's, that's what it's doing. So I guess in that sense, you could say it is what I expected, even though I didn't have a percentage number line. Gotcha. Well, great. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans to add any new aircraft uh, defaults? So I know that oh, there's yeah. some rumors about oh, yeah. 14, right. possibly. Sure. So um, what, I'll tell you what I want to add to the X plane. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I want to add my evolution to X plane, yeah. right? Um, uh, of course, I have an ACF file for my evolution. X plane flies just like the real airplane, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't have that 3D, you know, art yeah. asset to make it look like it, so I don't want to release it yet. But um, I want to get uh, I want to get a mod an artist on that um, on that evolution, and I think evolution is a shockingly good airplane for X plane because you have to fly it every second. It's not an airplane that just you fly an autopilot. You're always flying it. Uh, anytime you adjust throttle, you need to counteract with roll, yaw, and pitch. You have to fly it like you fly a helicopter. It's capable of going low and slow. It flies the approach at 77 knots. Wow. So you can get into any dinky, tiny little airport. Yet yeah. it cruises at 28,000 feet at 1.5. So you can go to large distance between places. And so what's so fascinating is, if a figure of merit for an airplane is equal to how many airports you can go to times how quickly you can get between them, yeah. you have a very hard time beating them. The Lancer Evolution. Gotcha. Like a Cessna 172, is so it'll go to the same airports as my Evolution, yeah. but it can't get between them, but at one third right. of the speed. Right. It's a much slower figure of merit. What about a Boeing 737? It's a little faster than me. Not much. It's yeah. 0.75, Mach 0.75 yeah. compared to Mach 0.5. It's a little so, faster, uh, not much faster. But how many airports is going to go to? Maybe one seventh. Yeah. One seventh. As a, I go to seven That's times right. the airport as a Boeing 737, gotcha. but he's only going, you know, 0.25 Mach faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you look at a figure of merit, I don't see how you touch an evolution. And it, now, is this very figure of merit useful in the simulator? Well, here's the question. How many air places do you want to go in the sim, and how fast do you want to get to them? So if you want to go to a lot of places in the sim quickly, there you go. Yeah. That's revolution. For the yeah. same reasons you want it in the real world, you For want real. it in the sim. Yeah. So uh, I want to see my, my Lance area. It's just a matter of getting artist time. Because, of course, you know the artists. They're, got, they're, they're looking at Boeings and Airbuses and, yes, military planes. we got some guys looking at the F-14, absolutely. And I think the F-4 needs to be, you know, improved and revamped. So, I mean, you know, there's all the military and airlines. And what about, you know, more helicopters? So it's always a question of uh, artist time allocation. But I want to cut in line and... Yeah, my evolution well, from the line. Probably yeah. Well, you'd be surprised. Huh. It's on... Um, Basically, Laminar Search is a little bit more like Game of Thrones, and I'm King Joffrey. You know, it's like, I think I own the Seven Kingdoms, but everybody's entitled their own little uh, domain, right? And so Alex is, uh, Alex Unruh is in charge of art, and uh, Ben Sutnick does a lot of project management, and uh, Tyler Young does a lot of customer uh, research. And when Tyler does a customer research and finds out that what people want is the Boeing, yeah. and then Ben says, we need to do the project management to make the customers happy. And then Alex says, I've got a Boeing 777. It's time to bring, you know, in my in my library that I haven't released yet. Yeah. Let's bring this thing to completion. Yeah. You yeah. see, the, the company kind of as a whole makes a decision for the best of the company. So I can't always uh, put my foot down quite as much as, I mean, maybe I could. Yeah. But I don't because we have so much fun all being cooperative, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, so thinking thinking about the future, you talked a little bit about x 12 and the concept of having a more uh, dynamic and unpredictable world. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, what would that look like and how would it benefit the sim and the user? Right, so that's, that gets into the long term. So you asked about yeah. short term and long term goals. So yeah. The short term goal is the frame rate and the networking and reliability yeah. and the bug fix and the obvious improvement in graphics and the senior gateway and, and air, air, available aircraft. That's the short term. The long term is a world where operating in this world feels like operating in the real world. Right now, I'm saying operating in the simulator feels nothing like operating in the real world of aviation. Nothing like it. Because in the simulator, everything happens that you told it to happen. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you fail. Yeah. Right? So you have a situation you completely control with no consequences of failure in the sim. That is nothing like reality. Of course. I mean, every moment you are flying a real airplane. It's like, imagine playing chess with somebody, but the guy on the other side is moving all the pieces slowly at once. Gotcha. And you're sitting here trying to make the next move. Just, oh, by the way, the penalty for losing is, of course, death. Yeah. So, you know, you're, it's, it's a death penalty game of chess where all the other pieces are continuously, slowly yeah. moving. Oh, so that's what it's so like to fly an airplane. You die in the sim, you die in real life. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's what we need to do, you see? Yeah. No, but, uh, so what, what I would love to see is at some point in the future of X-Plane, when you enter the X-Plane world, yeah. you're not in control of the weather. 
you're not in control of, of the failures on the airplane. You're not in control of the of what air traffic control is going to let you do. You're not in control of what airports wind up getting closed because somebody gear up on a runway. Yeah. You're not in control of whether the front is coming through and dumping thunder, you know, on on the airport that you're trying to get to. And you know that if the airplane is, if you quit the sim without landing, it yeah. can't just tap out. You have to get on the ground and stop. If you exit the sim without landing or you crash the airplane, in some way. Uh, a score is reduced, an account is reduced, yeah. a bank account is reduced. I probably can't do that because people just no, think I'm trying not. to get money. Yeah. But it should be what the way it is yeah. because that's the way you've got something on the line. Yeah. And um, the it, I, if you live in an X-plane world where you're connected to everybody else in a dynamic world where all the other airplanes are being flown by other people, the weather is being controlled by the laws of randomness or nature, yeah. and... Um, a, all sorts of things go wrong that you cannot control. And the only way to bring your score up rather than down, or bring your standing or reputation up rather than down, is to terminate your flight successfully being stopped at a ramp, uh, not crashing or exiting out early. And you have real air traffic controllers, something like Pilot Edge, for example, which is awesome. At that point, x will feel like flying a real airplane. But there's no amount of graphics that are going to do this. There's no amount of sound. That's going to do this. There's no amount of flight mode that's going to do this. None, none of those things are going to make x plane fly, feel like the real airplane. It's only going to feel like the real airplane when the world is changing continuously, whether you like it or not, and there are consequences of failure if you cannot work through nature to arrive at uh, a desired outcome. Yeah, well, that sounds fantastic. That's what mine is. I'm really looking yeah. forward to that day. Whenever yeah. it happens. I don't know how I'm going to implement it yet. Yeah, we'll see. Because the problem is... Uh, if I implement it the way I would want to implement it, yeah. which is crashing the airplane shuts down your computer, like, done. You know, thunk, uh, black monitor. You know, done. That's the way I think it should be. Um, or you buy the airplane for 10 bucks. How long do you get it? I mean, how long do you get it? You get it until you crash it. If I did that, people would just think, you know, oh, yeah, Austin's thanks. taking too much, you know, control yeah. of my computer. He's asking too much money. And they would think it was just nothing but a money grab or a power grab. It's not. It's trying to make the simulator feel like a real airplane. Yeah. But you have to acknowledge that people fly the simulators for fun, not to maximize their stress yeah, level. Of course. Many of us fly the sim to minimize the stress, not to maximize yeah. the stress. Yeah. But, um... In the real world, it's it's nothing like the simulator when you actually bank on the outcome. Gotcha. gotcha. So looking at the complete, and there's no take backs and no redos and no pause. Yeah, on the complete side, on the complete other side of the X plane spectrum. Uh, well, you talked a little bit about X plane mobile uh, yesterday. Yeah. Um, you know, what are your what is that development process been like, and what are your goals for the future for that? All right. So I initially wrote X plane mobile in a two week jam session at Apple Computer. Nice. Um, when these things just phones just came out yeah. and Apple was so secretive at that point they would escort us to the bathroom to make oh, sure we weren't wow. going to the bathroom to, to send out little pictures or something gotcha. that we had taken in the campus it's, it's like top secret and uh, and I cranked on Xavion uh, mobile and uh, you may remember X-Plane HDEF X-Plane Extreme I, you know, I did like oh I don't know maybe a half dozen or a dozen different variants of like five bucks each or something like that yeah. and um and uh, eventually it started to get a little long in the tooth, then I brought in Chris Serio. And Chris Serio, uh, I think that initially, initially when he took over the product, I think the gameplay was not fun. I mean, it was not a fun gameplay. But Chris has got the long play going on. Chris now has the source code of the mobile version 75% equal to the desktop. See, Chris is playing the long game here. And so what Chris is doing is he is setting this up for a world where eventually the phone and the desktop are basically either the same code base or almost yeah. the same code base, Whoa. where the only thing that's different on the phone is you don't have like the plugins and add-ons and stuff like that, yeah. because Apple can't have people doing plugins that might interfere with the phone's you know, OS. So um, as far as the phone, it's been an, an interesting, wildly varied history, but I think there's only one possible future, and that's convergence with the desktop where when you log on to this virtual world that I was telling you about, you absolutely can log on with your phone or your computer. It's irrelevant. Yeah. And you can log on with a, you know, a phone, you're still flying an airplane, who cares? No, somebody else can be in a VR goggles in front of a $10,000 Mac Pro, some guy else is on a used iPhone. Yeah. But who cares? They both look the same in VR. Yeah. So um, that's absolutely, yeah. without question, and yeah. inevitable, inevitable um, destination. It sounds fantastic. Yeah. Well, we've talked a little bit about a lot of things today, and I really appreciate Good. you taking the time. Oh, my um, pleasure. Just to finish off, you know, um, I think 
we have a pretty good idea about what you're going to be up to after the expo, um, given you know what you presented. But what are you personally most excited for? Um, in <laughs> oh, the I'm excited. Oh, oh I, the most exciting thing I've got only peripherally involves Xplane. So if you go to austinmeyer.com, uh, on the right side of the page, I think maybe halfway down or something like that, I've got uh, a link to an electric vertical takeoff landing airplane project that we're going to real EV toll. We've built and flown. And we're using X-Plane to run our flight test program for this EV toll in the sim before we fly the actual airplane. And I'm using Xavion, which is an avionics app that I wrote. We're going to help use that to guide this airplane, just like I use it to guide my Lancer whenever I fly. So um, I'm basically doing three projects right now. Uh, X-Plane, obviously, the continuous flight model improvements. Uh, v Beta, which is going to be doing the EV toll, where I'm helping design the airplane, build the avionics, and run in the whole flight test and design program on X-Plane and Plane Maker, yeah. and, and Airfoil Maker, of course, as well. Uh, and then Xavion, which uh, connects to X-Plane uh, for avionics and is, is going in the VTOL project. So I kind of got a trio of things all connected yeah. together right now. Yeah, great. That's yeah. fantastic. It's, uh, it's crazy. There's fun. lots of amazing yeah. stuff happening. Oh, yeah. uh, thank really you so is. much for taking the time to speak great. with me today. Great. My really pleasure. appreciate it. No problem. Safe travels back home. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. There you go.